Hello? Hello, indeed. Uh, hold on. Can you hear me? Let me just, uh, just get my settings going here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, camera. One, two, one, two. Uh, Hello, hello, hello. Hello, indeed. Oh. Sorry about this, Ranger. Let me just uh, sounds. One, two, one, two. Oh dear, need you. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, hi, Ranjan. Sorry, mate. <clears throat> Is it good? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to make sure. Here we are. I've got another 8% I can do there. For some reason, my machine is telling me now I now have to activate Windows, which I don't. It's I, I was downloading some other stuff yesterday, and it's caused a bug in Windows, um, hmm, which means I can't put the headphones in. But I, I mean, I can just about hear you. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, we'll go with it. It's just my hearing. It's not that it's not coming out or I'm not going in. It's, you know. <clears throat> anyway, how are you? Not bad, thanks. Um, yeah. I've been blogging. Um, yeah, I've, I've read a few. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really good because it's getting to the point where I'm reading stuff and I don't want to just continue thinking about it. I'd rather just drop it. And the easiest way to drop it is to just blog it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Did you manage to get hold of Grace Blakely? She sent me her book, but I haven't I haven't communicated with her since. I haven't read it. Oh, right. OK. Well, that um, would be kind of a thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I got it. I got it about a week or two ago. Maybe you whenever we last spoke about a Scottish chap that you did that other um, those other book reviews with, they're really good. I know, yeah. We just haven't communicated since the end of Feb. Ah. Um, we were going to be reading this one, which I suppose I should just read now. We were going to read this um, Silent Coup, the Matt yeah. Kennard book. And I haven't read it. So maybe the good thing for me to do is be to read it now and tell him, look, I've read it. What are you saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I. OK. I do think that it's. It's time to start reviewing books, writing books. And communicating at a more joined up level. I mean, I. I, I Oh, you heard it here first. I mean, I, I, I really do think that the internet is um, going through the same process that Friends Reunited and then MySpace went through. Basically, the inshittification is killing uh, the parasite. So, you know, obviously the parasite wants to keep the host alive, but uh, you know, basically people are taking the internet off like a tick and all we've got to do now is squash it. <laughs> I don't, have you ever removed a tick? You know, when ticks, they suck your blood and they sort of, and you have to pinch them off and make sure you get them out properly and then and then you squeeze them. Lick it away. They, yeah, I mean, the, um, but the internet, um, I think it's had its day. 
I really do. Uh, and I, I read a headline the other day about Mark Zuckerberg. Um, but I, I, I really do think that the customer fight back is 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 starting, and and I think you know uh, people will just turn it off. I think the same thing will happen with smartphones as well. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of inertia. There's a great deal of addiction to the endorphins of all of that. Um, but I mean, I've been saying for donkey's years that I expect Google and all the tech stocks to go to zero. Um, when when there's a political um, reversion to constitutional politics as well, even if they don't go bust of their own accord through people just not using them anymore, um, I think that they'll be broken up. It's you know, so that 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 chat we had two months ago when you know I was saying, look, the the answer to digital problems is analog. And uh, I've just been hearing a few things of different different people talking about the internet in a way which suggests to me that the general idea is sinking in uh, that. Um, the internet is being done to them and it's not at all which is actually helping people either as citizens consumers or individuals it's, it just isn't helping and i i accuse the general internet of that not just social media so the discourse in 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 in, in the political narratives is all about blaming social media and controlling speech on social media, i.e. keeping people in the social media uh, ghettos um, and manipulating people that use it within that. OK, so that's that that's the narrative and that's the political objective of the inshitified establishment through their inshitified Internet. Um, Andrew Bridgen gave a very good interview, which I watched the other day. You, you know, they had the uh, vaccine harms uh, debate in Parliament. Yeah. Uh, and afterwards, he did an interview about it. And he, he was uh, he said some really very interesting things about local politics, about you know, all the stuff that um, Wiki Ballot seeks to do. He's actually got on that page. Um, obviously, Gorgeous George is on that page too. George Galloway. Um, what happened in the Rotherham by-election, I think, is a precursor. Uh, and I think, like, what's happening in Scottish politics with the Green, the Greens, really, you know, proving to be a very bad smell in any sort of political grouping because it's so destructive of prosperity and human needs as, as, as well as human aspirations and what you know i mean uh, uh you know green is becoming a a, a sort of a, sh um, a, a, a a a shorthand for um dystopian destruction of any hope whatsoever you know it's a very very millenarian um manichean uh ideology at its heart which is quite at odds to what the early environmentalists um you know g green globalism is not environmentalism it's very very important i think to to make that point and of course it all that all goes into the the general mix of the solution is analog and the solution is in people grouping together getting together organizing you know um and uh and and getting on with it keep calm and carry on um, and turn off the internet and and the rest will follow. And I think we're at that point. I, I, I do think it's happening. 
Um, and uh, <laughs> of course, armchair warrioring on the internet with the usual suspects, the bandwagon jumpers like um, like Delling Prol. <laughs> um, the last blog I did was actually about an, an interview he did with Richard D. Hall when Delling Prol for me was Andrew Marr in the famous Chomsky interview. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm not I'm not biased. Well, if you weren't biased, you wouldn't be there. Quite. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't yeah. been. Yeah, I haven't been brainwashed. Said said uh, yeah. said Mar. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting question as well, isn't it? It is acculturation brainwashing. I mean, it is up to a point. I mean, have you read Walden 2, the B.F. Skinner novel, novel? Did you ever read it? I mean, I've read it a couple of times. Um, no, I only ever heard of it through you. I don't know if... I think you probably put the PDF up and everything, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't. Yeah, it, it, it's well worth reading because, of course, behaviourism, which was his shtick, um, is... It really is a, a dominant influence in the narrative spin approach to um, manipulating the public mind. And that's always a short term effect, I think, you know, you can manipulate the public mind, but not the zeitgeist. And the zeitgeist okay. right now is has got up ahead of steam. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the public mind is over the target and uh, merging with the zeitgeist and, and the job will be completed just as soon as people um, start using the Internet as a tool rather than using the Internet tools that have been designed to make them the object. Now, may I say something purposely provocative mm -hmm. and potentially offensive? Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you think that your belief in progress is faith based? Um, I can't I can't I can't believe how many loaded questions embedded within that one question. Yeah, well. Well, my whole being is faith based in the sense that I'm um, I, I believe in God. And as you know, I mean, I have a very syncretic faith, which merges all three Abrahamic Orthodox faiths and not the political derivations that that that, that have sprung out of them, you know, from well, the can, second, can I, can I be, first, can I be second even, Jewish rebellions through to, you know. May I be even more offensive? Yeah. Do you think perhaps as a businessman, you have adopted this syncretic approach with respect to um, the three monotheistic faiths, Abrahamic faiths, mm. out of political convenience. Um, Maybe not political convenience, because politically it's it, 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 it's not a very good political position to take. But I think I have done it for my own sanity. You know, it's, it's a sort of a, a, a preservation of sanity uh, point of view, you know, going back to the roots of uh, stuff uh, and, and finding where they, where they overlap. So. You know, Captain Corelli's mandolin when 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 uh, the doctor is talking to his daughter, talking about love and and and, and how um, the roots of two people become entwined, and you know the 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 flashiness of 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 of, of, of uh, a tree in bloom, which is maybe the beginning of a relationship. As a relationship develops, you don't see it. You know it's there. If it isn't there. You know the relationship ceases, so mm. in, in, intertwining of stuff. I mean, that's, a, that's one of my favourite bits in any book ever. And that sounds uh, a bit like um, David Foster, David Foster Wallace talking about the water. 
you remember where he the the one fish is going in one direction it's an old fish uh -huh. and there's two fish swimming in the other direction and the old fish says to the two new fish how's the water where you've just um swam from uh and they go oh yeah it's fine and the old fish carries on where they went they go where he was and one of the young fish says to the other one what the fuck is water yes yeah well, I think well, that's the, the, the internet is the water. Well, may I say this? Because uh, I'm not done with you. <laughs> um, you may try to, you may attempt to dazzle me with the beauty of your uh, poetic references. And it has worked, by the way. <laughs> but um, I believe your reply to me, I have no problem with this, by the way, is not very different to... Um, when I put up a tweet of Oliver Letwin's book, Privatising the World, and I chucked it at the guy before he blocked me, Christian Niemitz, and his reply was actually a good reply. He said, especially given the payroll he's on, he said, what would be wrong with that? Um, and uh, I think that you have, in a way, when I said, so the loaded questions were, when I said, is your belief in progress? faith-based the loaded part of that is i inserted a hidden infinity in there which is to say are you an exclusively faith-based loon mm. yeah, which i don't think yeah. is necessarily a bad thing but i put it in there and yeah. you your answer was when i then pivoted into because you answered by saying look i integrate the three faiths uh and then your i your answer was I said, is that out of political convenience? And your answer was, what's wrong with convenience? And I think that's a good answer. I like that. Well, I'm not sure but, my answer was what's wrong with convenience. I said, if, but what my answer actually was, is if it was done politically, it would be the wrong thing to do because it's not a good thing to do politically that. Yes. Um, but actually from the point of view of maintaining some sanity, um, you know, politics is, you know, uh, is about what is convenient, I suppose. I mean, I, I am a pragmatist. I, 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 I you know, I, I, I don't make any bones about that. I do think the two greatest gifts that the United States of America have given the world as a culture is, is jazz music and American pragmatism. Um, it's just Ooh. a shame that they 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 let that wither on the on the vine. Um. You may continue speaking, but I'm going to pull something out fairly shortly that will be of interest. Um, All right. But, but just before I do, um, you've just said that to do something because it's politically convenient can work. But I think it was quite interesting to think also that convenience and sanity do not necessarily go together they can but they don't have to and i think you were talking about them not necessarily going together say so to keep saying i actually go out of my way yeah i mean it, it, it's the other thing is as well is is you you have to put boundary conditions on stuff as well so obviously churchill's famous um or, or was it kate kane said to churchill or vice versa if if, if 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 the facts change, then I'll change my opinion. You know, or, you know, yeah. or, or new information. So, um, but in in any given question, the time period over which a set of um, actions remain appropriate, okay, you know, they have to be checked as you're going along. So, that, you know, this is the idea of universals and all the rest of it. So I put that on one side. Um, you know, what, what what time period are you thinking? You know, I know economics always say oh, in the short term, in the medium term, in the long term, and it gets them out of jail because they don't actually, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're general terms which aren't defined and, and you know, can't really... Uh, they don't really work mathematically. So this is the probabilistic work, so world, stochastic 
probability Ooh. and all of that sort of thing. Now, it all boils down to what David Graeber said about uh, determinism or free will. And this is another thing about the Internet. The Internet is a, ter uh, it, it is a tool to subvert people's free will, um, which is kind of a control freak type of thing. Now, in, again, boundary conditions of how long can you subvert someone's free will for? Well, you're not necessarily subverting some, someone's free will by manipulating their actions over a period of time, right? So the news cycle is quicker and quicker, I would argue, because its effect is shorter and shorter term. And the way the mm. internet works, you know, for those two goldfish going the other way in the water, you know, to stop them noticing the water, you know, I guess that if, if you were producing the, 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 the propaganda so they never bump into the big fish and the old fish, that actually says, well, you know, have a little think about it. You know, you're actually swimming in this water stuff and it's having quite a big effect on the general stuff, whereas, you know, the other stuff, those fishes are doing so you know as humans we're fishes in the internet water but we have a yeah. choice you don't have to go into that internet uh sort of sectioned off bit of the sea um I, so and the other thing about um it's funny you should ask the question because I, I i i was thinking earlier and i, I made some notes because I, I was going to knock out a quick blog this morning quite a few years ago i decided to really learn about time signatures in music you know what a what a bar in music is what the time signature is what the note values and all of it, what all that meant because it's mm. pretty esoteric it's very abstract and most musicians that get it or kind of have it in them almost find it very difficult to explain to a non-musician what that's all about. Um, but of course, you know, a bar is actually a bound boundary conditions, right? Um, and time signatures is it, a time signature is an algorithm for what happens within those uh, boundary conditions of the bar. Uh, and, you know, the note values and all the rest of it, it, it it's, you know, it all has, the algorithm is it all has to add up to one at the end of each bar or group of bars, whatever. Now, if you learn that system, you don't become a musician or, learn, you know, it, it doesn't even help you play music. You know, you have to do it to actually get it. And, and then all that notes stuff, notation becomes an aid memoir. And it's right. So and it's a real chicken and egg thing as well. So um, the lack of boundary conditions in truth claims has been a bugbear of mine since I started reading philosophy. Um, and I only started reading philosophy seriously in 2010 when I when I read Kant, which was quite I, I thought Lloyd's thing was hilarious. The other day. I, I did leave a phone message for him. <laughs> I was actually over Cambridge Way the other day, and I sort of said, you know, it's all right. I'm not not ringing up for a number. Oh <laughs> <laughs> hey my god, that is funny. You know what was also funny? Um, the so that was on the Friday, I think, in the in the standard. It may have been on the Thursday, and then on Saturday, did I tell you this? I, did I tell you about the article I saw in the FT? Um, on Saturday, I saw an article in the FT that was referring to the upcoming commemoration of the 300th um, uh, anniversary of Kant's birth. Uh -huh. And as you will know, you know, I wouldn't expect most people to know this, but as you will know, Kant never left Kaliningrad. That's and right. so, yeah. he, li you know, he was born, lived and died in Kaliningrad and never left. So an, uh, an article was written about um Kalin, Kaliningrad and revolution or Kant and revolution and it basically said it, there's an alternative world in which I go to the 300th commemoration but of course that's not going to happen because it's been cancelled it's going to happen in Germany instead of Kaliningrad which is technically Russia 
Uh-huh. Um, and so um, the article was written by that Albanian born professor. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm telling you, yeah, and, I look and, at the uh, photo. Was there, uh, I haven't seen a picture. So what, what, what was yeah, there, I, what, what I, was I there in, they, they... In, in this persona that moved Lloyd in such a way? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. So, you know, Lloyd, who we know, you know, had written this article. The article is actually a good article. He's a good writer. It's a good I article. He, 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 I, I, when we go out with him, I, I, he always has me in fits. He's a very funny guy. He's, he's you know, yeah. he's, he's. But the he's thing is that the, um, but, but the, uh, the article that was written in the FT. So as a result of seeing the article in the Standard about him, and it was also an article about him in the Times. I think somewhere in there, there's a photograph of her, and. You know, like other people, you know, I work with people. So I saw the photo of her and I thought, oh, she looks like many of the young women who come in and out of my classes. Um, that's it. You know, you know, people try to look their best often when they're out. She looks like so many other young women try to look like. And then I read the article, though, seeing her name, because the thing is, at the beginning, her name, her surname is YPI. So that makes me think that she's Chinese. Anyway, yeah. I read the article. It's so good. It's so well written. It's yeah. a brilliant article. It's. I mean, I'm, I'll I'll find it and send it to you if you don't find it yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the comment section, right? In the comment section, there was an article. There was, everyone is simply talking about revolution and Kant in the comments. Yeah. But there's one comment, and uh, this is early on, so it was within 12 hours of being posted. There was one comment that uh, said, "This is very timely." And then semicolon, close parenthesis. And um, it said a couple of other things. And the name of the avatar who wrote it was Shanghai Voice. Right. And I just thought, because he said the woman he paid was from Shanghai. Um, And I just thought that's, you know, that's another kind of like funny thing. Um, But yeah, really funny. And then I bumped into someone who, who wrote the book about Liz Truss yesterday. So when I came back from picking up those private eyes well, and the, well, this I, I is not her book. book. This is a book about her. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, okay. William and I interviewed. Th- there's a guy who works for the Spectator with Lloyd and wrote a book with Harry Cole about Liz Truss, and you know they released yeah. it roughly on the day that she lost power. Um, and anyway, his name's James. I can't remember his surname. So we had a chat about Lloyd um, in which I basically said, you know, we've met Lloyd. He's great fun. Um, it's a really good article. He perhaps shouldn't have written it. And this guy basically said something along the lines of, you know, it, it's totally on him. It's up to him. Yeah, I think it's hilarious. And uh, I've been like, who, who was one um, Clark? Um, Alan Clark and his memoirs talking yeah. about perving over Margaret Thatcher's tits and about the girl that sits opposite him on a train and stuff. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it reminds me a bit of that sort of thing. Yeah, I remember the, <laughs> I remember in the first few lines of his biography, of his diaries, he says, oh, yes, I, I've come into my office at Downing Street. I had a look at the receptionist. And then the way he said it, he just goes, she was very sexual. <laughs> Sort of think, I'm. How much Enlightenment philosophy has this man read? I mean, possibly a lot, but at the same time, really, if that was Pete and Dud, then he'd have just said, as as with Thatcher, you know, she gives me the yawn. Yeah. <laughs> now I've got something else to show you. I've identified it. I've been doing a bit of tidying up, but it's in the recent catalogue. So yeah, it's read this. Hold on, all right. American evasion of philosophy, genealogy of... Co- I haven't... Oh, it's by Cornell West, is he? Okay, cool. Is it good? I expect um, so it would be. I've only had a quick look at it. It says the American evasion... I think this is from 1986. Let's have a look. No, 89. Um, and it says Cornell West is Professor of Religion and Director of Afro-American Studies at Princeton. Um, his previous publications include Prophecy Deliverance, an Afro-American revolutionary Christianity and prophetic fragments. 
and an edited volume of post analytic philosophy 85 88 and 82. Um, actually, funnily enough, the other day I noticed there was the obituary of the person who coined the term African American. But it says here it's a highly intelligent, provocative book. West gives us illuminating readings of the political thought of Emerson and James, provides a penetrating, critical assessment of Dewey, his central figure, and offers a brilliant interpretation, appreciative yet far from uncritical, of the contemporary philosopher and neo pragmatist Richard Rorty. What shines throughout the work is West's firm commitment to radical vision of philosophic discourse as inextricably linked to cultural criticism and political engagement. Um, and then Rorty actually says uh, this is a very ambitious effort to tell a story about American thought, which begins with Emerson takes Dewey as a central figure and ends with the present. I believe the American invasion philosophy will be widely read and respectfully reviewed, and that it may well become a standard account of the role of pragmatism in American thought. Um, he also mentions so Dewey, but he mentions Sidney Hook, C. Wright Mills, W. E. B. Dubois, Reinhold Niebuhr, and Lionel Trilling. Um, what are your I've thoughts about? Pierce. Does, does he mention C. S. Pierce? In I'm, I'm sure I've seen Pierce in here. He, yeah. He's known. Some people say it's James, but it's actually Pierce, and I think Pierce um, inspired James in lots of ways. Yeah, um, in fact, he may have that, taught him. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I don't know why I can't see Pierce in the contents, but I'm very, very, very sure that um, I saw his name as I mm. as I just flicked through. Uh, what do you, what do you, what does what does all that mean? What does all what mean? What is the significance of... Of, of what? Of American pragmatism? Yeah, I mean, he was writing about it in the late 80s. What, what, what where did it... I mean, I understand it's about... <clears throat> I remember an old student told me pragmatism is about um, the shortest route to the answer that will give you the best amount of, um, like, almost bang for your buck. Um, well, look, like cutting the crap. What, there's a brilliant book um or article paper whatever called we pragmatists okay but by hack uh and it's a do you mean hacking but do you mean ian hacking no no hack it's, it's she's a female philosopher sorry and um it's an imaginary conversation between cs pierce and rorty okay and um i mean i there's one particular part of it which I quote a lot, which, which is a made up quote from C.S. Pierce talking about, you know, stiffness in the arm and, you know, honesty in the eye and all of that stuff. And it's, it's a lovely, it's a very poetic quote, so it won't surprise you that I, I found it very inspiring. Uh -huh. um, but pragmatism, if you think about it, right, is a sort of syncretism of many schools of thought. OK, so there is an interview with Rorty on the web talking about revisiting old schools of thought and not throwing the baby out with the bath, bath water. Right. Um, and. Syncretism, OK, if you take the best and what does work from a practical perspective, you know, cognizant of cultural mores and you know, the human condition in different parts of the world. Yeah, 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 approach, yeah. Yeah, well, a syncretic approach it is actually um, very useful because you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But but if, if you search YouTube for um, Rorty baby bathwater or put it in, in my blog, it, it, this video of him talking about it will come up. There's also an essay that he wrote in the 80s, which I quote, I can't remember the exact, citation off the top of my head right now um but for me okay the idea of american pragmatism is that the question is right what has works what is working if it ain't broke don't fix it whereas more ideological schools of thought which say it's our way or the highway that's when you tend to get the sort of the um uh Procrustean bed or the um uh the patamelelit well however you say it epicycles to make would you the say would you, did, did, 
So, you know, it's it's all very well in practice. Does it work in theory? Ideological, um, you know, cultish schools of thought. And we're living in a a world which is centering around cults of personality more and more. I was thinking about that today. There is a cult of personality around um, Elon Musk. I was thinking about that this morning. That there's a cult of personality in the same way that it was around Steve Jobs. Now, um, and in Google, um, you know, they, they started off with their slogan in their cult, don't be evil, then they became evil. And I, 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 just, I personally think all cults of personality, you know, wind up being evil. So, you know, basically, it, they're easier to corrupt, basically. In fact, it's a, it is a very short route to, to corruption. You, so, it's, yeah, almost, I mean, it's, almost, it's almost like saying, once you say, don't be evil, you're automatically opening yourself up to being evil. And then the, other, the alternative is to just say, be evil from the start. Yeah, uh, yeah you know what you were saying about pragmatism? Yeah. And this links into what you were saying. Um, I think that. Um, do you think it's possible, one, that Donald Trump was is the first full on living embodiment of a pragmatist president. And secondly, do you think it's possible that pragmatism, which by definition is taking the best of everything, uh, is um, it is possible to become a fascist pragmatism where you say I've taken the best of everything and I'm going to stop listening to you now. And I actually have I switched off the listening, and now it's just whatever I say is the best. In my take on it, pragmatism is more likely to end up in a conservative type of outlook rather than a fascist, deterministic outlook. So, um, you know, back to David Graeber again, you know, Heraclitus, Paramonides determinism or free will i mean it it, it or, or, you know li- libertarian free will styly or um determinism and computing and the internet and the digital thing predictive programming all this idea ai okay and the the worship of ai is it's it's a hymn to determinism. That's what it is. Whereas the disproof of that is no accident. No, it's twelve to the log two minus eight, um, and I would argue all day long that that dis, dis, disproves determinism, even though um, physics has gone down a route of you know all the string theory, all the their tr- you know, singularity theory, all of that stuff um, is basically. It's a catechism of determinism. Uh, it's Procrustean. It, it, you know, it, it denies um, knowledge in the sense of, you know, uh, provable, provable can stuff. You, can you so make I, that, I, I, and that's not a hint for materialist thinking again? either. Pardon? Can you make that physics point again? The physics point about um, just now. You're talking about determinism. Yeah. So. Determinism, so Big Bang theory, for instance, is a deterministic theory, and it was actually promoted first by the Catholic Church. Okay, so uh, after they were done with Galileo, right, um, they decided, right, well, we better get a grip of this stuff. Um, You know, Big Bang theory came out. Now, atomism goes all the way back to... um, to Pythagoras and you know the pre-Socratic schools, it's really ancient, um, and the combination of those two uh, in support of the idea of an infallible pope, okay, um, which is a political ideal. It's got nothing to do with getting closer to God. It's got it's got more to do with controlling the plebs. Um, and so 
the idea of um, theory, theorizing and having theories that fit with this predetermined deterministic ideology that basically says that um, uh, you may as well do as you're told because our betters know best and you're only going to end up doing what they want anyway because they intercede between the human relationship with you know our, our father you know god you know the you know yeah. the un you know the un the unknown the own that unknowable the you know they so are I, the gatekeepers. I believe all of that stuff so in that sense you know my arguments are ultimately faith based but they're not deterministic because i don't i i believe that god gave humanity free will okay or, or gave his creation free will you know that that's that's uh, so and that 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 has to be a matter of faith you know um it doesn't and have that is the to, source yeah, of I, mean, your I, I don't impose that on anyone else but that is at the core of my world view and that is the source of your optimism isn't it um well i i have a great belief in humanity i like human beings i think human beings are just great just as they are and they that that our free will when 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 we are given the choice like pelagius says uh we, you know we, we we choose the higher path as human beings that that is the default setting of the human condition but don't you think that there is the um i'm gonna say capitalist but it's probably not the right word but don't you think there is also the role of the person who gives people choices that get them into trouble and does that knowingly such as saying i'm going to arrange for you to think that you need to chop your genitals off and feel good yeah, about it but that, 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 that you know of course there are bad actors there are you know um of course okay you know, they're, they're, but they're they're, they're there aren't necessarily good and bad people. It's just that there is we're all capable of good or bad, dependent on yeah. the choices or, you know, you're going to your first question. Do I really, uh, you know, are, are my views and what I'm saying about the Internet just because I'm a businessman and it's convenient for me to say that because that's what my business plan would require? Well, part of being an entrepreneur is to encounter the world as it is. So this, this is Hume's is all dichotomy. Um, you know the world as it is rather than the world as it ought to be well determinism is all ought it's all ought and you know the is of the human condition is edited out the free will is edited out then you know mm. that's 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 why I, I i really believe that i, I hold that and I, I would defend that that that's a hill upon which i'm prepared to die defending that that belief but I say, may I throw a couple of things based. in? May I throw a couple of things in? Mm -hmm. um, I was going to blog about it, but I didn't because I wasn't in full blogging like that. But there are a couple of stories over the week. Um, at the beginning of the week, there was the idea that the FCA were going to name and shame people who are under investigation. Um, and what's so? And then, and then the the paper makes it look as though. The crypto minister or the city minister bim afalami who by the way was done for a breach of parliamentary standards just seven days before he was made the minister yeah that's quite a big deal uh, well, I mean, uh whatever happened to innocent and less found guilty i mean it, it's pure well, hold on hold on roger you can't be falling into my trap this early yeah. mm. <laughs> um so of course the the papers orchestrate this thing which says that your Tory MPs in the city are up in arms saying you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, they already fucking do that. This week itself, they have said these people are under investigation. These people are under investigation. The FCA already say when people are under investigation, not always. You know, you know, in America, they're not they're likely to finish the prosecution and then they do the announcement. But over here, they do say it. You know, do you remember Jess Staley? He announced himself that he was being investigated by the FCA. And I contacted the FCA one or two occasions and laughed because they just said we can't say anything. Well, I, I would widen the question out what gets announced and why. I mean, Jess Staley was obviously because of Epstein. 
and it's a fire yeah. break. Um, and so um, the FCA are no less bent than everybody else, you know. And don't forget, Andrew Bailey had a big input on how it goes, and he's what you know, he is one of the major pillars of what's wrong with the establishment. Liz Truss yeah. is absolutely right about that. But I think also from, you know, like we've been talking about pragmatism and philosophy and stuff like mm. that. There's 100% discretion, zero clarity when it comes to what the actual rules are, except uh, everything is permissible, except when the people who decide decide it isn't. Well, they're the best um, by the rules, Ranjan, the rules you can make up as you go along. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, again, so now, we, so now we're talking about the regulation business, the business of regulation as opposed yeah. to the regulation of business. Um, and so there you go. And, you know, so, for, you know, just like confiscation of people's things, um, you know, that's fine. But what happens when it happens to you? Yeah. You know, like, et cetera. You know, they're like, oh, it's bad people getting their shit confiscated. But I mean, obviously, I'm speaking to someone who's actually had it happen to them. Mm. I, think. I mean, obviously, I didn't want to go into that. But, <laughs> you know, so yeah. when I see the Bill Browder stuff and they just go, yeah, you know, ever since that Magnitsky thing got mentioned, it was just like, oh, yeah, because we can just like take other people's stuff. And he's yeah. like, what about on Saturday when in America? So, yeah, here's another thing. Should our parliamentarians be allowed to leave Westminster? I mean, it's it clearly on Saturday they voted for something in America and they I think they simultaneously voted for Ukraine, Israel and TikTok. I mean, I don't know what else. Those are the only things I heard of. So the TikTok ban is actually fucking going through. They so whatever anyone says about how broken the Internet is, TikTok is one of those things where I can listen to other people. You know, like I can actually see and hear what other people are saying. Um yeah, it's dependent on the algorithm, but the stuff is there. I can go and find it. Um, and when they ban it, that's not OK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other thing that was interesting was um, in the comments to the FCA story, um, somebody said you must watch um, Corruption in the City, Yes, Prime Minister, the episode. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I think it's been a long time since I've seen any Yes Minister. So it's Yes, Prime Minister, Series 2, Episode 3 or 4. It's called A Conflict of Interest. Mm -hmm. um, it's brilliant. You know, they say the baby with the bathwater. They like they, they do a list of metaphors in one go and idioms. Um, but that's the one where at the beginning, um, uh, Humphrey walks in and Jim Hacker says that he's upset about what's in the papers. And, you know, they do the newspaper gag. Yeah. Like that. But, um, yeah, it's it, that there you have it. That's like the, the, the pragmatism, isn't it? The regulation thing. Yeah. I, it's, anyway, I, I am optimistic to answer your question. I, but I'm a born optimist. You know, entrepreneurs kind of have to be. I mean, it's what, you know, it... it, it um, but not in a, you know, you need to be optimistic, but you can't afford to be deluded. <laughs> that, that, you know, expect, well, if you want to be successful anyway. Um, and uh, what passes for social entrepreneurship is an inversion of all of that, you know. The, um, and so what I've been encountering the last four years in public procurement, right, uh, um, it can be summed up in um, right the movie Bank of Dave on Netflix, which deals with banking corruption. Mr. Bates about the Post Office Horizon scandal, which basically uh, deals with high level cover ups. Um, and. The. Third thing is the high speed rail HS2, right, which is kind of like the exhibit A, I think it should be exhibit A in how fascist things have got and how inverted it is. And if you look at HS2 and then look at the early um, Richard Dimbleby documentary about Chile in 74, secret filming in the in Chile, have you watched it? Definitely right. worth watching. And it shows exactly what um, Milton Friedman's prescription for Chile led to, which is elitism, right? Now, HS2, right, high-speed 
rolling. What it really is, is high speed gravy train. You know, high, high high speed trains, high speed gravy trains, more like, right? And that high speed gravy train globally has been locked into the Procurement Act of 2023. Okay, on which I'm such some, something of an expert now. That act has been instituted all over the world, similar to what you're saying about TikTok, you know, these other things that were all voted in Parliament the other day, you know, money to Ukraine, all the rest of it, Israel. I meant I mean in America, but yeah. Yeah, but in America, but but the idea of acting in lockstep Obviously, there was the pandemic, so the event 201 pandemic. Um, build back better, you know, all, all of oh, these. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's determinism running wild. It, the, the delusion of these algorithmic mindsets, and I include Elon Musk in, in, in this. I, I think he's he he, he definitely definitely is um, not to be trusted uh, and basically he, he, he's an industrial tyrant you know he's had a run-in with the, the unions in Sweden recently Do, were you aware of that so um, so anyway that, that, that that's my point I am optimistic and and and, and um, I, I I felt as soon as that consultant said to Sajid David when he was the health minister, no, I'm not going to get the jab. OK, I, that was a key moment for me. Um, I thought it was interesting. I watched the Sky interview yesterday with the, um, oh, what's he called? The guy that was being openly Jewish in Regent Street. Do you know? The, Gideon, the, Gideon Zolter? Yeah. Yes. So I, I sent you that thing about the Luntz report and about Haspera and dealing with. Yeah, I haven't read that. Is that about Luntz from 2014? Yes. Well, no, it's a, a, the Luntz report was a bit earlier than that, I think. OK. Um, but it, it was, you know, it was, it was some time ago. But that that's how I mean, I only came across it because I was very interested in how climate change was being communicated. And I got hold of the handbook of climate communication which is basically don't talk about the science you must follow the science but don't talk about the science you know it's all got to be about the feelings and and, and so where can i, I find mean, it's that? Just basic psychology and behavior where can i find that handbook i'll send you a link you probably wouldn't find it on the internet these days but i've, I've got it in, in a cloud folder i can send to you okay so a similar one came out about you know, COVID and all that. It, it's the it's 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 the narrative management handbook, okay? And Haspera is all part of the same piece. You know, it's not it's not it's not an exclusively Zionist or Jewish type thing. It's it's PR, mass public communication, manipulation, propaganda. It's as old as the hills. Um, it's just been adapted. I've, se I've seen it for GM food. Yeah, it'll be the which will be exactly it's 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 the playbook. I think it may even be called the playbook. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Um, yeah, I'll say I'll send you a copy of it. It's not very long, and it's not really that interesting. It's it's it, it's only shocking if you don't know that's how things are done. I mean, it's quite nice if you do know that's how things are to actually see it in black and white for all the morons that 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 put it in place. Uh, Roger, I think it's my turn. Yeah. OK, <laughs> I'll play nicely. Yeah, OK, so I'm going it, to it, like on the surface, it's two more bites of the cherry. OK. Here's number one. Um, I'm sorry, this is a bit too much of a build up, uh, but it's basically just a little bit of provocation. Flat break up and decline of private renting. Chris Hammett, House of Commons Library. Right. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. I was having a, a I quick read look that. at it. Well, is it any good? Um, well, it's just like a but concept. Where was it written? That, I think it's mid 80s. Let's have a look. 88. Right. But I suppose you'd have been like a very busy boy at that point 
Um, but yeah, it was basically just talking about you can feel the concept of build to rent floating around. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You can just sure. feel it there. Mm. Um and basically just saying, Oh, there's just so meant so much money to be released by just turning everything into flats. Mm. Um, stuff that like aren't necessarily flats. Let's just go for it. So it just talks about how that has affected the mindset, but also the knock-on effect, mm. which ultimately comes into the things that you've been talking about. It's just like, how do we house people? Mm. Um, you know, like it, it kind of brings that into play. And then I found this, which is, I found this ages ago, but this week I've been teaching a woman. She befriended me on LinkedIn, um, but she's in my class. Mm -hmm. um, so she is um, involved in, in a Central European country in banking for uh, construction. Mm -hmm. So the other day, I, I, I found a copy of this anyway, sitting around, mm -hmm. and that is from 1993. Right. And this is by someone who's an LSC uh, person, but, you know, like part of RICS mm -hmm. and things like that. And I was reading the beginning of it, and, you know, it was just, it's just not often that I can see something that's put together in a way that's designed for you to understand a little something. <laughs> Basically, mm. her, her name is Yvonne Ridin or Ridin, who wrote that. But mm -hmm. um, it was just well put together. You know, yeah. just it's, it's not often that I can concentrate while I read something mm. and someone is actually just saying to you. Mm -hmm. and, and very similar to those conversations that we had in 2021 about. Um, it should, yeah. Desmond, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So how's it all going for you? Are you um No, I'm I'm pretty busy getting there. So I'm you know, I am cracking on. I, I am really, really busy. Uh okay, well I, I'll let you way. carry on. W w one last thing. You know how you um I know you're not gonna like this at the beginning, but that's fine. <laughs> the thing the thing is about certain things. Oh yeah, firstly, you know how you got a mate called Irving? Yeah. You know how in America, if you say Uncle Tom, it's got a particular connotation. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it means. That's, yeah. I know, you know, I know what it, what it means. means. Yeah. Uncle Tom Obama or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I was re so I've obviously been reading the book that I found. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've been reading other things. And I remembered a book about an American, uh, the guy who set up the JDL like the most kind of like um, vigilante of the vigilante groups. Mm -hmm. And he then goes to Israel and he ended up being murdered in America by an Egyptian who was then afterwards involved in the World Trade mm -hmm. Center bombing of 93, but um, according to Wiki. But um, the it said in there, it's basically exactly the same as that booklet, which is saying the reasons why Jews should not be liberal. You know, Jews should not be friends with blacks. They should not be having any relationship with anyone who's not Jewish and stuff like that. You know, I'm talking about so at the beginning, it was just talking about um, Jews and that's uh, that, 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 the snippet from that book you sent me this morning saying quite the opposite. Oh, it's very well written. Yeah, it's very well written. And what I'm talking to you about is, is two things. It's one, the book that you saw. Yeah. But the thing that I'm talking about as well is that guy. Yeah, who, okay, yeah I realise who's who's. Well, yeah. you've got the polar opposite view of what was described in that those pages. Well, no, but the thing is that that book is basically giving you the polite and well-written road to what I was saying. You know, it was basically it was basically saying. Um, it, 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 I've never seen well, anything. basically what you're saying. The JDL were promoting Jewish supremacy in a in a yeah. white supremacist sort of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. There's nothing. To, I don't think there's anything disputed about that. But yeah. I think what's what what was interesting was the book's so well written in that it talks about um, previous things that had been done. So mm -hmm. it goes through the reason why Jews were born to be what they call liberal, you know, not born, but like all of the civil rights work that they did. And then yeah. it goes to the point where it says, and at that point, we can never, ever, you know, we must convince Jews to stop doing this. It just doesn't help. We've got to stop being liberal. But um, that wasn't. So anyway, in there, in, amongst that reading, it says Uncle Irving. I'd never heard this before. Uncle Irving is like Uncle Tom. 
Oh, wow. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they basically said Uncle Irving means that you're you're kind of um, what's the word? It's kind of. Yeah, like, you know, a, 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 you know, yeah. a white loving person. Yeah, sort of the, 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 an instrument of the slave master. Yeah. And on the subject of Irving, who clearly has been involved in the manufacture of catchy tunes um, yeah. and slogans over the years. Um, I now unveil my uh, final part of my presentation. Um, do, 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 do. No, I'm not humming um, Johnny Be Good, uh, but I am humming the small, the, the very similar um, Beat It by Michael Jackson. And I think right. that rather than rather than driven by you the the tune <laughs> for homatics should be homatics homatics that's that's how it should be mate cuz you can't get that out of your head that's the thing yeah you got to go to the lowest common denominator mate you know if you're spreading the word um, well and that I... and that's beat it <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, okay, so I, here's, I'll, here's, I'll, I'll, I'll consult Irving, see what he says. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, I asked, I asked ChatGPT4 because I put 50 quid aside to get ChatGPT4 up and running, but I forgot. And right. I was like, oh, because you know how you know how I'm so busy and I'm so important. Um, I basically, uh, for some reason, didn't get around to it. Yeah. And then the other day, I thought, you know what, I'm still busy and important, but let's make some time for this. And um, yeah, so I, I you know, I, I started it and you will not be surprised that I asked it to write a blog post for me about the prime minister's uh, recent issues. Um, in the style of GK Chesterton, and some of it was really fucking good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I and I, but the, in the prompt I said because he didn't identify that I was talking about Boris Johnson. I said, "Can you talk about the Prime Minister's recent troubles, particularly the way in which he appears to have gone to Venezuela, funded by a hedge fund?" Talking about Johnson. Yeah. And there was a line where it said, um, "You can't blame him for going for a bit of sun, sea, and socialism." Um, then I said, can I have a dialogue? Just as you said, there was an imaginary dialogue with Pierce. I said, with the imaginary quote, I said, can I have an imaginary dialogue between GK Chesterton and Boris Johnson on the subject of good writing? The first line was, may I, it says, you know, in a dark room, yeah. you know, in a, in a smoke filled pub. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it always starts like that. And then it said, uh, GK says, I, can I just start by saying what a great pleasure it is to have a conversation with someone from another century. Um, and then the other one that I got was I wanted a dialogue between Horatio Bottomley and George Lansbury. So the guy who set up the FT and the Evening Standard with the guy who set up the Sun. Um, I wanted a dialogue between the two of those um, on the subject of how Britain yearns for communism and yet does everything in its power <coughs> to prevent it. Oh my God, it was a good dialogue. It was good. <laughs> it was good. So I think maybe I'm going to have to say, I'll have to stick some ingredients in. I'm going to say, I'd like these tags included, affordable housing uh, and a few other things. Yeah. And I say, can I have some catchy lyrics to the sound of Beat It? But with homatics <laughs> as the name of the song, and we'll see what comes up. Yeah, you can't get rid of me, mate. I'm in. The, I'm in the team I now. Wouldn't wouldn't dream. I wouldn't even try. <laughs> we're, we're, All right. We're, we're well, on there. that, I'll let you carry on. Sir, good talk to you, Ranjan. Take care. Have a great day. Adieu. Cheers. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye.